Oh, he's got. It was a match which um, was poised to be a very good match because if Glamorgan had beaten us, I remember this quite clearly, Glamorgan would have won the championship. If we had beaten Glamorgan, we would have finished in the first four. So it was everything to play for. And when I went into bat, I think we were about something like 200 and something runs. And I was going to just go in, have a little look at the ball in, and then try and get on with the game, get as many runs as possible so I can make a declaration. There are a few more people here then than there are now and they were dotted around uh, the members enclosure here and uh, various people where the old scoreboard used to be. Malcolm was both, Malcolm came on, I started to play a little few shots off the medium paces, they brought Malcolm on and he came on at that time when I was about to get to, to you know, to just throw my hat, throw my bat at the ball, it didn't matter whether I got out or not. The whole ex, um, ex, the whole uh, purpose of the exercise was to get as many runs in a shorter time so I can make the declaration and give them an opportunity. This ball I bowled to him after T was not a bad ball. Now she's got to pick that, that was the right distance, he's hit that. And he hit it straight up here, over mid-off, uh, uh, for six, and over Roger Davis's head. Oh, oh, crikey, here we go. I must say, I had a very short boundary on the leg side, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Malcolm being a left-arm spinner meant that the ball was coming into me, into this short side, as you would know, yes. you're left-arm spinning yourself. <laughs> and I thought, well, with one eye on that side and one eye on the ball, that's where I'm going to aim most of my shots. Um, I was bowling left arm orthodox round the wicket as i'd been doing for i don't know about seven or eight overs prior to tea and i got a couple of wickets so we carried on and i kept pitching up the best way to get him out is to let him have a go at it and um, we'll see if we can get him to whack one up in the air and get caught that's another one Goodness gracious me, that peppered the top. You see the chap climbing up there to have a look. One might have hit the guttering on the cricketers. It was All either right. the second or the third. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and check the, the, the film on that. But it's a, And the ball came bouncing back into the street and it got thrown back into the ground and uh, that happened. Oh, bloody hell. I mean, that went into orbit very near. And, you know, the lads were getting further and further away from me. Eddie Phillipson was, was the umpire. I had a slip. I don't know why I had a slip at that <laughs> stage. Marjid was at slip and Ivian was having a little go at Sobers. And Malcolm thought, well, it's not good enough. Right. It's obviously a short boundary. And being a, a very shrewd professional, he thought, well, I'll drift it a little bit further outside the off stamp. Oh, OK, keep it up there because he's going to miss it one any time now. In 29 minutes. That's another one up in the enclosure. And that went up into the seats because at Swansea you come down something like 99 steps or something. something so like that. it's a long walk when you make not. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, that one went all right. Next one came along and he drilled that square. Oh, he's got that shorter one. It's up again. There it is. Bouncing on the. On the and I played everything off the back foot and everything was well pitched up. And I thought, oh, golly. Okay. Fifth ball. Roger's on the boundary down here. I don't know whether I deliberately held it back a little bit, but I, let's just say that I gave it a little bit more air and wasn't quite such a full length. And so it was went through his shot and he, he got underneath it. And Roger got under it and caught it. And then for whatever reason, he just sat down on the line, put his backside on the line. Unfortunately, the feeler, who could have stand up onto the ball and caught it very simply, tried to get the ball into his lap, and by running back, right. he got the ball in there, and he and the ball went over the, went over the ropes. And I was on my way right. as soon as I saw him. And um, yes. the crowd start shouting, you're not out, you're not out. <laughs> right. I think they were enjoying it even more than I was. <laughs> I was shouting he was out. Yes. <laughs> Tony Cordell was a long on and he was going six, out. <laughs> he didn't I walked halfway down and when they said that, I stopped. And then um, Eddie Phillips. Eddie Phillipson, that's and right. And who was the other umpire? I don't remember who the other umpire John was. Longridge, I think, was the other umpire. So they started to consult, and all of a sudden the hand went in the air. Six it is! So there was one to go, and I thought, 
Tony Lewis keeps saying, well, you know, I kept coming up and telling him to do this and do that. In fact, nobody said a word to me at all. <laughs> there was nobody close enough. I said, well, Malcolm, I know you're an old pro. I know you're going to try to change the line. You're going to try to change the pace and the flight. But I've already made up in my mind that this is what you're going to do. So I'm already prepared. So I know you're going to try to ball it flatter and quicker. And you're going to try to ball it outside the all stamp. But the, the thing in my mind that focuses more is the short boundary there. I'm not going to try to hit it straight because six sixes has never been done before. And it's the first time that it entered my mind that six sixes could be hit in an over. So I said, well, I got to give it a go. I can't let it slip up now. I ran in and bowled the last ball. And what thought, were you trying to bowl? I bowled a seamer off the short run, round the wicket, something I'd never ever done before. Uh, and it was the worst ball of the day, not let alone the over of the day. And he's done it! He's done it! And my goodness, it's gone way down to Swansea. And Malcolm did ball it a little bit quicker. And he dropped it halfway down the wicket. Oh dear. My eyes open as big as a football. And with one eye on the ball and one eye on the short boundary, and I swung at it. I swung so hard, even if it hit the top edge, it would have still gone for six. But unfortunately, it hit the middle. And that disappeared. Um, you can see the two buildings here. There's a road that runs between those buildings over uh, on deep mid wicket area and he dispatched it down there and it ended up at a bus stop way, way down the road. I, I went to the pavilion and they said the commentator was saying, oh my dear, that one has gone over the buses, That's it's right. gone over the houses, yes. it's gone to the Gill Hall. <laughs> and and, and it, ladies and gentlemen, the Gill Hall is somewhere like four miles away. Yes. But there was such a long time of where the ball was and getting more balls out from the dressing room to carry on that, that Gary said, oh, I've had enough of it. Right, let's declare, and off we went. I think it was just one of those unfortunate things that happened to Malcolm, and um, unfortunately it was a world record. And um, I know that it put both of us on the map, uh, because it doesn't matter whether you're at the right or the wrong end, it doesn't really matter because it takes two, as they say, to tango. And without Malcolm, I could not have been there, and without me, he could not be there. And, and how did you actually feel when the six sixes were hit, the sixth one? Um, I was a little shaky on that one. I thought, oh my God, what's just happened? But it didn't register the fact that, oh, well, that's the first time ever in the history of the game. The others were reminding me that's the first time it's ever happened. I bet well, they were. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's happened. It's going to happen sometime. It's just, unfortunately, it's me. But it never affected my psyche. Honestly, now, it, it, that's just one of those things. Never bothered me. Still doesn't bother me. Malcolm is such a good sport. Yes. Uh, you know that Malcolm and I we were walking up to this rostrum as soon as it happened and Malcolm was smiling and I looked at him and I says, Ma Ma Malcolm, why are you so happy? What are you smiling about? He says, well, listen, don't forget, you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we had a cigarette and uh, he was joking and he said... Should have been a Hamlet, really, shouldn't it? <laughs> it should have been, yeah. Have a, whoa, absolutely. And then we did a TV interview at the end of the day and uh, there was a lot of useful information out of our dressing room saying actually make sure you get the right fee for the TV and this that and the other and Gary was talking to me about that going over and he got double the fee that I did but uh, well we had a great interview it, it was it wasn't a fix was it no <laughs> golly no because the no. cameras were here of no. course and is that a is that a good thing that the cameras were here do you think or a bad thing from your point of view um, I'm not complaining about that. I think it was a good thing. Um, certainly a good thing from recording for posterity uh, and the first time that that's ever happened in history. Yeah, that can't be bad. And I remember I was standing up talking to Wolf Waller, who they called the Mayor of Glamorgan. <laughs> and while I was talking to him, a little boy came up to Wolf and he said to him, he said, um, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Wooler. Is this the ball? Is this the ball you've been looking for? Is this the ball that Sir Gary Serbus hit for the last six? He looked at it and he said, yes, son. He said, where did you find it? He says, oh, I found it down the road and it was still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of it uh, for certain reasons. This is your life, Morgan show, all sorts of things, good things like that have come out of it. And that would never have happened before. So, and somebody somewhere around the world always calls up or sends me an email saying, were you the guy? And they never ask about 
when Shastri hit one or when Herschel Gibbs did it. And they never talk about Broad being hit for six sixes or Talik Raj. They never ever get talked about. Only this one here.